Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up. We've got another review for you today, this time of Blood Rain Revamped. This review was written for us by Asdin of Grinning Wolf Games. So thank you very much Asdin, please do check his channel out, I will put a link to it in a top hand comment. It seems as if we are going through a gaming renaissance recently, with titles that originally released two decades ago being brought to modern consoles with a few visual and quality of life improvements. Cigarette Interactive have not only released Blood Rain Betrayal earlier this year, but they have also secured the first two instalments of the series. Originally released all the way back in 2002, Blood Rain combined the popular third person hack and slash genre of the era with vampires, Nazis and the occult. Is this revamped game worth your money, or should we not raise it back from the dead? Well thank you to the publishing team for the review code, and now let's find out. If the liar is woken we're all in big trouble. The game begins in 1933 and consists of three chapters. In Morton, Louisiana, Rain's first mission with the Brimstone Society is to investigate an outbreak of an unidentified disease in the area before the story then takes you to a number of locations around the world in a tale revolving around the Nazis delving into the occult. I did find the story interesting, being a fan of World War II settings, especially when a sci-fi or horror spin is put on it, as has been the case for many other games, comic books and movies over the years. Rain, our protagonist, is a half-vampire, half-human, with a hatred for vampires and seeks to kill any she comes across. She is a cool, calm and collected force to be reckoned with and will come up with decent, snarky comments here and there. In terms of gameplay, this is a pretty linear third person hack and slash where you'll have to carry out small tasks such as collecting a specific item or killing a certain number of enemies in order to progress. Blood Rain offers that hack and slash action in spades and it is enjoyable but the formula may seem a little too simple these days to anyone used to more modern games where there are a lot of things to collect and secrets to discover in each level. Rain will be able to use her blades to slice and dice her enemies and she has a chain whip which will draw them closer so she can then drain them of their blood which is the series staple when it comes to healing. She also has a spinning grill kick which is used to break down some obstacles and knock back the enemies. I personally enjoyed picking up firearms dropped by the enemy, of which there are plenty in the game, and Rain will then be able to dual wield them. There is no lock on system in the game, as Rain will automatically aim at whichever enemy is in her line of sight, which is a very useful feature. Due to the camera being set behind the protagonist, there is a chance to be ambushed by enemies that are hiding around corners. Rain's auto lock sets her arms and head pointing at the enemy's direction, giving you time to attack the hidden assailants. I don't know if this was a feature of the original release, but it certainly makes the game a lot more enjoyable. Range weapons are broken down into three classes, light guns, heavy guns, and lastly special guns, which tend to be the kind of weapons that pack the most punch, and it is advisable to save them for boss battles. There are also grenades and dynamite that you can throw. During your playthrough there will be cutscenes that serve as a visual aid as to where to go or what needs to be carried out next, although if you get lost one of Rain's powers allows her to pinpoint her next objective via a button press making the screen change colour with said objective being shown as a blue sphere of light. She also has the power to slow down time which comes in handy when being shot from every angle and you can tell the game was strongly influenced by the Matrix movies as so many games were in the early 2000s. I didn't find any collectibles in my playthrough and in terms of character progression, Rain will learn a new attack upon defeating an important boss. These are just an extension to your combo rather than an actual attack. In terms of the controls they can be a bit hard to grasp at first and do feel slightly antiquated but after a while you'll be high jumping and slashing your way through the game. The melee attack button is mapped to L and firing a ranged weapon if you have one is done with the R button. I don't know if it's due to the location of that melee button on the controller or if it's just a lack of a true lock on system but I did feel that the melee attacks lacked the satisfying hit upon contact. Rain can dispatch human enemies quickly but it never felt that there was any finesse in her blows meaning that when possible I opted for ranged weapons instead. The camera is fixed a few meters away from the protagonist and she can do a 180 degree turn while standing or in the air similar to that that was in some of the earlier Resident Evil games. She is light on her feet and easy to control, albeit some tiny platforming sections felt more difficult than they should do owing to a combination of the height of her jumps and the awkward camera controls. The gameplay is enjoyable and although it has aged significantly, there is definitely fun to be had, cutting down Nazis and demonic creatures alike. There is a big issue with the game though unfortunately and that's just how often it seemed to freeze during my playtime. 
Every time it happened, I would need to reload my last save point, which was usually near the beginning of a level, and the frequent loss of progress was incredibly frustrating, as I'm sure you can imagine. This deterred from the overall experience, which was a real shame. I quite enjoyed the gameplay itself, I must say, even if some of the old school mechanics were a bit clunky these days, but having to effectively redo large chunks of levels, an entire level on one occasion, because of technical issues, really just isn't acceptable. I'm hoping these get patched soon, but as it stands due to this, gameplay scores 11 out of 20. Controls for the most part are fine, although they do show their age at times, but they score 14 out of 20. This revamped version has added support for higher display resolution and upscaled cinematic videos. These include improvements to lighting at the engine level, plus fully reprocessed lighting data, as well as engine improvements to support uncompressed original textures, fog, shade and water effects. In layman's terms, this means the game has had a digital facelift, which will keep all of the original assets but make them look and run better, sharpening them up in the process. For the most part the game runs well but there were some stutters here and there which is unfortunate considering that this could have been avoided when bringing back a game that is almost 20 years old. Plus there were some immersion breakers such as static assets if you have a look here at this bat frozen in the air. I did personally enjoy the somewhat cubed cast of characters and I am happy that they preserved the original in-game models especially their lip syncing whilst talking which was a nice touch and was unexpected. In terms of the heads up display, Rain's face icon represents her health, whilst the weapon selection appears on a bar at the very top. The slow motion animation is decent, and watching Rain dodge bullets in this state is very satisfying. The game menu and title screen as well as the opening cutscene are quite impressive, if not showing their age a bit, but it certainly has a charm to it. In terms of the audio, for me, this was the weakest aspect of the game. The sound effects are good, although there is hardly any actual music within the levels, and on other occasions when there was a cutscene, I could hardly hear Rain talking due to the noise in the background. There are audio settings in the game, but they do not allow for a louder voice during these cutscenes, where the background noise drowns her voice slightly. It's a shame, as the voice acting itself is decent, and Rain is as snarky as they come. Another sound-related issue is the music sounding like it's cutting off. At first I thought it was how the song played in the background, but upon pausing the game, the issue stopped and the song carried on playing as normal. I also found issues with certain sound effects missing their cue. Visuals are decent on the whole, although some levels feel too dark and occasional stuttering can affect the immersive experience. For its age, the animations, combat and cutscenes do look quite good though, and overall they score 13 out of 20. Audio, on the other hand, is a bit of a mess in all honesty, with technical issues really hurting this area. Much more care was needed to have been given here, and it scores a disappointing 9 out of 20. Blood Rain Revamped costs £17.99, and regional equivalents are on your screen now. Whilst initially this sounded like a potentially fair price to be able to play a game, that has become a bit of a cult classic since its original release, with a few tweaks and quality of life features being added of course, the reality of the intermittent freezing, the stuttering and the lack of care and attention with regards to the audio issues means that this is just too expensive. It's still a good game, albeit one that has certainly aged in some areas, but the aforementioned issues really do hurt it and value scores 9 out of 20. To conclude, there has definitely been a resurgence of games from the 6th generation getting themselves a new lease of life, and those old enough to remember them, myself included, are no doubt pleased about this and eager to see which franchises may be revived next. Although I never actually played the Blood Rain games back then, I am happy that they have had a second chance on modern consoles, and whilst the gaming mechanics and visuals are of an acquired taste, even with the added facelift, this is a good game at heart, allowing you to destroy the Third Reich and their new hellish recruits. The technical issues make this a hard recommendation at the moment though, with so many tiresome freezing moments forcing you to reboot the game. As it currently stands, this game needs more than just a facelift. It is playable, don't get me wrong, but again, the freezing occurs too many times, and I don't think nostalgia can save it from such a big issue. Personally, I'd wait for a sale or definitely a patch that fixes these issues, and hopefully the second game fares better. That wall stretches across the whole town, 30 feet high. I can see that. So, from what I understood, even... Blood Rain Revamped gets a switch-up score of 56%. Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it, please do remember to leave a like if you did, 
Very disappointing that another game with a remastered Monica seems to have failed on technical issues on the Switch. Let's hope they at least patch it or better still, how about it just stops happening, that would be nice. Anyway, a big thank you to Asdin for writing this one for us. Please do check out his channel, link is in the top in comment. Thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming. They sealed this tunnel too. I need to clear it. Bastard, bastard. Enough already. Mm.